Thank you very much, and thanks for this opportunity to come to Bouyatrix. Um, first, just like to make an announcement. So uh, I'm the head of clinical service at University of Queensland Production Animal Service, and we are currently seeking two veterinarians. So if you are or know somebody that's looking to move into academia or move to Queensland, this is your opportunity. We have a more senior position that's uh, somebody that's further along in their career and a more junior position if somebody's looking to get into academia or is more newer in their career. So please pass the word along. Okay, so Lantana is something that a lot of us deal with, a lot of us see. Um, in Queensland, it's something that we would see routinely, but going to the literature, there's actually not a lot that people have taken the time to go and, and write it up. So i um, curious about you know, some treatments and trying to look into some prognostic issues and uh, follow up for a long term to see how things progress. So this was just a case series that I saw. So background, Lantana chimera is a poisonous plant that's um, represented worldwide, um, and it causes primarily liver disease um, and photosensitization, and it also causes renal injury as well. So the case series um, here, it was a single outbreak, 50 naive drought master steers and heifers were um, brought into a a new paddock. So Drought Master is a tropically adapted popular breed um, that was developed in Australia. Uh, seven days later, a portion of the calves developed lesions of photosensitization, which was uh, consistent with a uh, lantindin um, intoxication. And 14 of these calves had evidence of photosensitization, so they were clinically affected by the lantana. So we define photosensitization as a progressing dermatologic lesion with vesicle and bulla formation, serum exudation, ulceration, exfoliation, scab formation, skin necrosis, and skin sloughing. Um, so what you guys have all seen, but you need to make the case definition so that um, it's all consistent and all the calves that enter into the study have those lesions. And for the purposes of the study, we took 14 case uh, match controls, calves of the same sex that were in the same paddock, um, but did not have any clinical evidence of disease, of lantana intoxication, um, to more properly evaluate these calves that were affected. Thus, uh, 28 calves in total received a full clinical examination um, by myself, and all 14 calves um, that were controls were bright, alert, or clinically normal. Um, no abnormalities identified. Uh, 10 of the 14 affected calves are mildly obtunded. Uh, two were mod moderately, um, so they're pretty, pretty slow. And two were severely obtunded, and one had, um, had to be encouraged quite significantly to rise and wasn't really that excited about living. But, um, and 12 of the 14 calves were icteric as well. So sites of the uh, photosensitization, uh, the nose was the most common in, in this, so all calves had nose lesions. Um, ears and periorbital areas were also the other common areas for this group of drought master calves, and down to um, one had a, a tongue lesion even. So urine was collected on all the calves, um, or most of the calves uh, weren't able to collect urine on all of them. They just couldn't, we just weren't able to get it. The reason that we did this is that we had a theory in our practice that maybe a USG would be a prognostic indicator. Um, and we were kind of doing it ad hoc, and, um, but decided, well, we have a large enough group, we can probably get a decent idea if this is something worth pursuing further or not. And unfortunately, um, it didn't turn out to be a, a good prognostic indicator in this case series. As you can see, that um, the animals that were isothenic uric, um, they were both controlled and diseased animals, so um, didn't really do us a lot of good in this uh, case series, but maybe somebody else has had different experiences, but I can't really recommend pursuing it a whole lot further. So, the, our standard treatment in our practice is activated charcoal, about five mg per kg, uh, orally through an oral rumen gastric tube, 
and oxytetracycline, our standard dose 20 mg per kg in the muscle, just the one time dose, and they didn't, didn't receive any um, continued treatment. It was just uh, supportive care by the owner, try to provide an area paddock with some shade so they can get out of the sun, um, fresh clean water, um, and obviously no lantana exposure. So a follow up, uh, two and a half months later, uh, there were no new cases and all cattle were eating and they appeared to be bright, even the one that um, wasn't very excited about life on the day. And the derm lesions were uh, pretty well unchanged in location. Um, some were healing and decided to take uh, some blood profiles on these calves to see if they were responding um, with their uh, hematology and uh, their renal and their hepatic values were all within normal limits. So at least within two and a half months, all those values had returned to normal in, in an outbreak. And a longer term follow up, uh, nine months after the initial visit, the, all the calves, they were uh, successfully marketed, and the owner reported that there was no devaluation of, of any of the cattle, so they had all um, regained their, their weight and their condition, and they all looked in similar condition, the ones that were affected and the ones that were ill. Um, interesting thing that even nine months later, they still had hair loss on their ears, or a, a few of them did. So cattle buyers, at least in Australia, are always looking for something to ding you on, and, but uh, at least they didn't um, ding this owner on these lesions, but it is something that owners will have to consider that there, there can be long-term aesthetic issues with these calves. And, but if treated appropriately, treated um, early on, that they can recover and they can go on. So this outbreak, it was, we did have some severely affected calves, though none of the calves died, so that is one um, Limitation for, I guess, the, the follow-up, um, that it could have been a, a worse um, outbreak, that maybe some of the blood values would have been still elevated at the, the longer follow-up period. Um, so yeah, it's just something that we were looking into, um, common thing, and a little bit of a longer-term follow-up. So the conclusions of this case series is that the treatment that we provided uh, appeared to be effective. Um, all the calves were able to recover. Um, that was char activated charcoal and oxytetracycline. And the urine specific gravity was unfortunately not a useful prognostic indicator in our group, but I guess nobody died regardless, so wouldn't have been able to tell too easily with that. Um, commonly reported sites of photosensitization in drought master cattle are ears, nares, and the periorbital area. Uh, renal and hepatic values return to normal within two and a half months, and there can be some long-term aesthetic issues with uh, lantana exposure that owners may want to be aware of um, if they um, think that there might be an issue in their area with marketability with um, the aesthetic issues if the cattle buyers may think that they are um, still affected or diseased in any way. So that's all that I have on that.